Right, welcome everybody. Uh, welcome to today's most probably the last session for you guys. Uh, it's about uh, the Sean stack. It's not a real stack. Uh, let me tell you that first. Uh, it's uh, you'll get to see what it is. Right, my name is Shashank. I'm a senior developer advocate for Salesforce Developer Relations. And let me do the uh, forward-looking statements drill first. Uh, I might make any uh, forward-looking statements today uh, about products which are probably not generally available already. Don't make your position purchasing decisions based on that. Only decide based on uh, features that are already available in the product. Right? Okay. So what do we have today? Let's look at the mean stack. Uh, mean stack is a popular uh, stack uh, of building web, web applications uh, using JavaScript-based technologies like MongoDB, Express, Angular, and Node. And we're going to look at a simple sample application and a few code highlights. And let's we'll see what Sean stack means. Sean stack actually means um, replacing MongoDB with uh, Salesforce as the data store. Use Salesforce REST APIs at the data store. And we're going to use we're going to have a look at the Enforce NPM module, which is an open source module uh, to access the Enforce.com REST API very easily. And we'll look at uh, a little demo application that we have, which is like a modification of the first mean stack application that we'll see. Right. OK, let's look at uh, MeanStack. What is MeanStack? Uh, MeanStack is, uh, which expands to MongoDB, Express, Angular, and Node. Uh, it uses MongoDB as a database, Express as the web framework uh, uh, for the back end, and Angular as the front end framework, and Node.js as the runtime for, for Express. So that, is, that comprises the MeanStack. Uh, it is a popular stack these days. Uh, and uses and most of them are all uh, JavaScript based technologies. MongoDB uses uh, BSON, which is similar to JSON. Express is a Node.js framework. I Express is a, a wrapper over Node.js to build uh, web applications and APIs very quickly. AngularJS is, uh, as you might be knowing, it's a JavaScript framework, component based. And Node.js is uh, a runtime uh, where you can you can actually run JavaScript on uh, on a server instead of just a browser. Right? OK. Let's look at a little sample application that, ha that I have. Uh, it's based on uh, an existing open source project. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's the mean contact list. And uh, here's a little structure of the application. Um, just a very beautiful looking diagram there. Uh, it, the front end is Angular and the back end is uh, Express using Node.js and the data store is MongoDB and Node.js accesses MongoDB through the, Mongo, the, the uh, inbuilt MongoDB driver that comes with Node.js. Let's have a look at the application. I have it deployed on Heroku already. Let me go to meanstack contactsheroquabcom This is a very simple uh, contact list application where it, we just have a list of contacts and you can create, edit, delete, and update, uh, create, edit, delete, and view contacts. Uh, this is a current list. It's a very small list. Uh, that's my contact information. You can just click back. And this Mark Benioff's contact information. Uh, just because we're on the same contact list doesn't mean we're friends. I just know him because he's my boss. <laughs> and I can create new contacts, save back, it'll automatically refresh. So this is a AngularJS front end with an Express back end and a MongoDB, MongoDB database. Uh, let's have a quick look at the code. OK, so this is the uh, structure of the code. Uh, we have an app.json, pack, package.json, and a server.js for Node.js. And we have, uh, we have our app.js file, which is the uh, AngularJS file. And we have all the HTML. If you look at just the index.html, uh, it's, it's Angular style, and it's a single page application whose view is uh, uh, controlled by uh, uh, routing. And if you go inside the AngularJS application, um, the, the default routing is provided this way. And it shows a list.html uh, 
page with the control with the list controller which actually uh, calls makes an api call to an express backend right let's just have a quick look at list controller uh, it takes in contacts from the controller and each each of the contacts are iterated through and all all the contacts are shown right so this one calls the list controller the list controller takes data from contacts.data and the contacts are supplied by the service for get contacts it just makes a http get request to forward slash contacts which is an express backend right let's have a quick look at the express backend before we actually look at the uh, the api routes let's just have a look at how we make a database connection using mongodb we just make it a little bigger so we're just using a mongodb uh, default mongodb module and we use the, we're using express and we make a database connection mongo client and set up the database give the database in db start the server and we are ready and these are the contact api routes the easiest one the simplest one being get contacts this is what the angular js application is calling it just returns uh, like if you just give find nothing it just returns everything right so it just returns an array of all the contacts inside the contacts collection in mongodb right very simple uh, very simple application uses the simple basic mongodb driver uh, we, there is another alternative called mongoose if you want to use that's also there but we'll just use this one for now and every route has its own uh, api with get and post obviously let me quickly show that as well so we have get contacts here and we have post on contacts we want to just create a new contact and just want to get a little particular contact id update contact id edit a contact id we have routes for all of them and the delete one okay this is our simple application uh, it's available on uh, GitHub anyway. You can get it from there as well. I just click new. Let me just quickly create another contact. Just have to save. Click back. Yeah. So I have got like three contacts right here. But these are these are the only contacts in my data store. Now, uh, let's go back to a presentation. OK, now uh, we understood the application. Uh, the next step would be to uh, uh, not use MongoDB and use Salesforce as a backend, right? So uh, it's not that Mong uh, Salesforce is a replacement for MongoDB, but there will be use cases where you need to use show Salesforce data and give, an ac give access to Salesforce data on your web applications. So how do we do that? Uh, we do that by replacing uh, MongoDB with Salesforce REST API or complementing it. Uh, and it's an extremely simple thing. It's, we're going to use the same mechanism that our application is using. And little introduction with that flashy animation there. MongoDB is replaced by Salesforce. And Salesforce, like if you, like you use the MongoDB driver in, uh, in, in Node.js to access the MongoDB database, the same way in, uh, if you want to call the Salesforce REST API, you can probably try to make direct API calls. But there is a very, very handy utility wrapper to use uh, Mongo, uh, Salesforce REST API. It's called Enforce. Uh, this is again an open source uh, npm module uh, which has which is like a very simple library and uh, it gives uh, s object query update read delete uh, and makes it really easy easy and sim uh, the oauth is made easy the authentication is made easy and there there are like bunch of examples that you can pick from uh, like i could build this in like very really short time just because just because of N the enforce module okay now let's look at the um, sample application again, replaced with Salesforce instead of MongoDB using Enforce. This is the structure of the uh, original MongoDB application, which becomes this. 
MongoDB driver becomes Enforce, and uh, the MongoDB back backend becomes a Salesforce REST API. Let's have a look at the code for that. Or let's actually check out the application itself right away at the beginning. I have it on Heroku again. There you go. So these are all the contacts in my Salesforce Developer Operation account, and you, you're able to see them through the REST API. And I can actually create a contact if I want to. Let me just go ahead and create myself. OK, so now we have myself as well as my own contact. I have my own contact information stored so that I, so that I, don't, have, I don't forget it. Right? So this is where it appears. The same create, read, update, re uh, update, delete operations. It's the same thing. Everything is, everything is absolutely the same. Like if this is the same guy over here. And this is the main application. We'll go back to our Salesforce ba backend application. It's the same thing. Only difference is that uh, instead of Enforce, uh, instead of the MongoDB driver, we're using Enforce to access Salesforce data. Okay. Now let us go into the code for that, um, and we also need to note that nothing much changes from the existing uh, uh, the main application. So let's do a quick comparison of what we're going to change. No, index.html is not going to change. The app.js is not going to change. The list HTML is not going to change. Package.json is going to change. We'll have a look at that. And there will be some changes in the server.js because that's where Node.js you know, is calling Enforce. Let's look at a comparison between both of them. Let me bring it up. So this is a mean application. I have my Sean application right here. Make that bigger for you. Okay, does it look big enough for you? All clear, legible? Thank you so much. OK, let's do a quick comparison. Uh, if you look at the first section where we are requiring all the modules, uh, you, don't, uh, you don't really need a path module because there's nothing local over here. Uh, so only module you'll, you'll be needing is Enforce, which is the extra one, which replaces uh, MongoDB. You don't really need a collection, collection variable. App, creating Express app, it's, gonna, it's the same again. No difference there. And let's have a look at the connection to the database. Just made sure they're like adjacent to each other, so you can have a, have, have a look easily. Uh, the connection is uh, through the REST API, so it uses OAuth. And in this situation, it's, it's using the username password flow, where I just need to get my client ID, client secret, and the redirect URL, and callback URL, and a, a, few, a, couple, a few more options that the Enforce create connection uh, function needs. And I give it that and initialize the server. Initializing server, nothing changes there. The connection is the only thing that changes here. OK. Now that we are ready, let's look at the API routes. OK. Basic uh, handling, if you look at the forward slash contacts get method, uh, you would see the difference uh, is that you have to log in to the sales, uh, Salesforce instance. You have to authenticate. Uh, you've already authorized it, but you have to authenticate it. And then uh, as, as a callback, do a little org.query. So org is 
the uh, org is instance of our mod uh, module and org.query is where you just need to provide a SQL query to Salesforce. So org.query is uh, part of the part of Enforce. Uh, it's a function provided by it's an API provided by Enforce. So you can just do you can just pass a query to it and it's going to return the result. Return the result and we just send it back. That's the only difference. Here you just do a find and array. Here you just do org.query. That's the only difference. Same with uh, the post as well. Let's look at the post. If you want to create a new contact, uh, if here you do uh, DB collection insert one. This is a MongoDB, uh, MongoDB API. And on the right side, you just need to do enforce.create s object. And create s object and uh, locally create an instance and then do org.insert. Do an org.insert and provide it the s object. Bingo, that's it. That's all you need to do. Enforce is going to take care of everything else. The same drill for everything else, uh, all the all the operations, all the basic CRUD operations are already available. There are a few more advanced examples as well in Enforce. Uh, you just need to use the Enforce API functions to just to get what you need. So that's all I did. And if you notice correctly, there's not much difference as well. They just work the same way. It's the same application, except that the uh, backend data store is different. With that. I'm done with my presentation. And do we have any questions? <laughs> All right, thank you so much. Yes. Oh, sorry, you don't have to come there. Did they use uh, Angular 1 or Angular 2? This is Angular 1. When you when you connect with the um, uh, Salesforce, uh, you don't need to specify any user ID and uh, password you credentials. Can, you can. It's there in the first call. So how Enforce works is uh, you can either authenticate in every single uh, call, or you can authenticate once and use the token for every single call. Oh, okay. So all I, I, uh, I did I, I did I did authentication in the first get contacts call. And since then, I'm just using the token. I don't need to authenticate every time. OK, because I don't see the user ID and password. It's there. Just I use the <laughs> because it's mine. <laughs> OK, fine. Thank you. Anything else? All right, thank you so much.